Desktop Metal is one of the largest and most influential 3D printing companies in the world. Working to make mass production 3D printed metal a reality, it has become one of the first 3D printing unicorns. But how did they get there, and where are they going? Desktop Metal was originally founded in 2015 in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Their CEO, Rick Fullop, had previously been busy creating a company you may have heard of called Proto Labs, which created parts on demand for engineers and manufacturers all over the world. Among his co-founders were Eli Sachs, the original inventor of binder jet 3D printing, and Chris Hsu, the then chair of MIT's material science department. When they started out, they raised $14 million with the goal of making metal 3D printing a mass manufacturing option. Since then, they've raised more than $811 million from companies like Google Ventures and Coke Industries. Their first product came out in 2017 with the release of the desktop system and the announcement of what would become their production system. The desktop system was basically a variation of a standard FDM machine, just upgraded in order to use cartridges of metal powder in order to deposit binded powder into an FDM printed part that would later be centered and baked to make a metal piece. This granted them the first few patents, both on how they achieved the support material in those parts and some other design features of the machine. In 2018, they had been granted two patents with more than 100 pending. In that same year of 2018, with the announcement of the production system and the progress that they had gained, they had reached a valuation of $1.2 billion. Not bad for having only been in business for three years. In 2019, they were one of just three 3D printing unicorns the other two being Carbon 3D and Form Labs. Carbon being based in San Francisco, Form Labs also being in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Finally, in 2020, they decided to go public through a SPAC merger, which gave them an initial stock price of over $36 when 3D printing was made very popular by the COVID pandemic and the responses that it had made to it. At this point, Desktop Metal became a true company and they started making acquisitions. One of their first and largest was the purchase of Envision Tech, which allowed them access to resin 3D printing and a number of other technologies that both expanded their patent portfolio and gave them a group of customers and a segment of the industry that they had not had access to before with their metal technology. Of note at this point, Desktop Metal had only shipped two products, their desktop system and their shop system, which was a downsized version of what would become their production system. Production system that had been announced in 2017 had yet to ship. However, desktop metal went public during a boom time. The pandemic of 2020 was a prime time for 3D printing companies when the public knowledge of the technology was revamped due to its response to COVID through the creation of PPE, such as face shields and nasal swabs. So their stock price got an initial bump that helped them a lot and helped to fund their long-term acquisitions. At the time, their price stock price had exceeded $31. However, since then, the excitement about 3D printing has cooled, and currently Desktop Metal has lost its unicorn status, having a valuation of about $750 million and a stock price hovering around $2.50. However, Desktop Metal has had its revenue growing in triple digits over the last several years, primarily through their acquisitions. Since they've been able to access markets from existing companies with an existing client base, they've been able to support an increasing revenue and better manage and merge those companies under one roof to where they can run very efficiently. It has been interesting to watch Desktop Metal grow because they seem to be moving away from being purely metal focused and instead starting to just become a generalized 3D printing company, expanding into other market segments as demand allows. So Envision Tech gave them access to resin capabilities that they previously did not have access to, as well as the patent portfolio. And more recently, they've acquired companies like Figure in order to create metal press parts that are able to digitally manufacture sheet metal pieces, which previously wasn't possible before. So desktop metals appears to be expanding far beyond even just types of 3D printing, but into all sorts of digital manufacturing in general, leveraging their stock price and investment cash to acquire other companies and consolidate a very strong digital manufacturing company. However, what happened to the production system that they had originally intended to ship? It began shipping in March of 2022. 
All sorts of technical problems exist around mass production 3D printing. And the fact that there were delays is not surprising. The technology is very difficult, even with the exceptional team that they have at Desktop Metal. But really, one of the largest challenges that they had was centering of parts. Metal part centering is exceptionally difficult, especially when you're dealing with various types of 3D printed geometries. You should check out one of our other videos about why metal 3D printing mass production is so hard in order to get some more context about this. But it looks like long term, desktop metal is targeting specific niches, such as wood and hydraulic applications with their acquisition of hydro, in order to let them create not only the machinery, but also the parts that the machinery creates. They're making the printers, but due to limited demand for 3D printers throughout the industry, due to hesitation of how people operate it, they are actually pursuing the applications itself and growing into a much broader digital manufacturing company. Looking forward and down the road, currently Desktop Metal has 650 patents that they've accrued both through their own creation and from the companies that they've acquired. And it seems like they have quite a bit of ambition and are interested in becoming a dominant player not only in 3D printing, but a dominant player in digital manufacturing and manufactured products in general. Thanks everyone. Comment down below other companies that you'd like us to take a look at and do a profile of and like and subscribe to the channel. Have a great day, everybody.